Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Sexual violence and conflict is not inevitable. It's often an intentional strategy to further terrorise vulnerable women, girls, men and boys. Sexual violence can be committed at the hands of state-affiliated perpetrators or indeed non-state armed groups, including terrorist organisations. Violence against women and girls, gender-based violence, is much more common, as we have heard, in conflict zones. And victims of sexual violence and conflict are often subject to rape, forced prostitution, genital mutilation and forced marriage. These unspeakable acts and their unspeakable consequences are almost unbearable to discuss. But we must speak up and debates like this are absolutely vital. What is also vital, though, is the funding and resources that help tackle these horrific acts and support those who face it. As a developed family of nations, we have a moral obligation to do our bit. However, the disturbing direction the Prime Minister and his government is taking the UK, UK in breaks a legally binding commitment and yet again another of his own manifesto promises. Having set up the Prevention, Preventing Sexual Violence and Conflict Initiative, which 155 nations joined to commit to ending sexual violence as a weapon of war, the UK has sadly rolled back. The initiative has faced significant issues and in a report by the Independent Commission for Aid Impact in 2020, it was found that despite initial strong leadership following the departure of Lord Hague's Foreign Secretary, senior ministerial interests waned and funding and staff resources fell. The initiative made some important achievements, it said, including creating an international protocol used to secure convictions, but also had no overall strategy, did not focus on learning and failed to include survivors systematically, which we have heard is absolutely crucial. Madam Deputy Speaker, this government is asleep at the wheel on this important issue and the Prime Minister, who was previously Foreign Secretary, is front and centre of this folly. The UK is the only G7 member to cut its international aid as a COVID-19 response. That should shame us all and is not supported by the majority of Scottish MPs or I suspect the majority of the Scottish people. The Scottish Government recently conducted a review of its international development policy and committed to offer at least £500,000 for projects that promote gender equality in partner countries across the world. Rather than claim to be hampered by it, our review in Scotland was prompted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Scotland will continue to employ whatever levers and resources it has within the constraints of this union to ensure it's doing its bit. But I have no doubt an independent Scotland would take its place on the global stage as a nation ready to meet its international obligations. Because even the PM's own backbenchers have admitted these aid cuts will cost lives. The UN said that more than 500 rape cases have been imported, eh, reported in the Tigray region of Ethiopia in March this year. At least 27 cases of sexual violence have been recorded during the recent protests in Colombia. And China stand accused of organised sexual violence against its Uyghur population. These are just a few horrific examples of what people, mainly women and girls, are at risk of enduring in an already devastating and volatile situation. So the UK must not use the COVID-19 pandemic to shirk its responsibilities in fighting what the UN calls a global pandemic of gender-based violence. And it's an outrage that this House and its democratically elected representatives were stripped of our right to vote on the cut to aid. It shows once again that this Tory government cannot be trusted. Madam Deputy Speaker, the people of my Livingston constituency, and indeed the people of Scotland, are an outward-looking, forward-thinking and progressive nation. I cannot wait for the day when we as an independent nation on the global stage have the full basket of powers to operate and support those in need with all our might and power. Until then, we in the SNP will continue to challenge this Conservative government on their despicable actions. A change of heart and actions are sorely needed. The world is watching and the UK is at present at grave risk of doing lasting damage to its international reputation, but more importantly, to the most vulnerable people on the planet. At the very least, the Preventing Sexual Violence and Conflict Initiative needs new money and new life breathed into it. Gareth Davis. 